breaking news and talk you can trust. This is the Inland Empire's answer. AM 590. To help curtail the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus and to ensure patients can continue to receive the health care. Right, I mean, so the people that we see actually um, succumbing to the virus, having the, the worst morbidity and mortality are those that are poor, that are homeless, that are working class, those that, are, that, that run the transit systems, um, those that are in, you know, in uh, supermarkets, etc. cetera. Um, so when, when you say... When, when President Trump or uh, Ron DeSantis, they're basically the same person. When when they say these things that they're going to open up and continue as business as usual, then what you're saying is that you really don't care about you know the the uh, the poor people, the working class individuals. You don't care about their health. Former Stanford chief of neuroradiology on, who is saying stop the panic and end the total isolation. We need more and more of these voices here. John and Ken. Not only is President Trump throwing Twitter support to protesters who believe their states should not have social distancing and business restrictions. His campaign is talking about resuming rallies in arenas. lack of truth, especially in the secular news and our wonderful Washington whatever. I think the cover-up and misinformation and propaganda as the coronavirus emerged there. <laughs> Soy el peor Andrés. Por si no lo sabías, todos podemos participar en el Censo 2020 de manera segura y confidencial. Por internet o por teléfono. We have a warm weekend ahead and outdoor recreation is back on the menu in San Bernardino County. Just as the coronavirus was breaking out in the United States, the New York Times reports China was trying to get into the heads of Americans with a massive disinformation campaign. More from correspondent Scott Carr. Mike, the messages became so widespread over one 48-hour period in mid-March. The Times reports the White House National Security Council issued an announcement via Twitter. The messages were fake. From China, a man who vanished after posting videos from Wuhan's front lines reappears. Chinese citizen journalist Li Zhuo says he was detained by police and quarantined because he had visited sensitive epidemic areas. The last videos he had posted online showed him being chased by a white SUV in the city of Wuhan, eventually being taken away by people identifying themselves as police. Li said he was treated well, given three meals each day, was able to watch Chinese news, and that the police, quote, really cared about him. Suppose uh, an 81 year old could risk her life or his, hold on, I just finish, risk her life or his life and go into the casinos. And uh, I suppose it is their decision, just like it's a decision of you or I, to stand in the middle of a road when a bus is coming and get killed. Uh, it is our decision, you're right. Doesn't mean it's right. There should be laws and there should be things put in place to make sure that people that maybe are susceptible, that are ignorant, do not harm themselves or harm other people. I want to play you a little bit of sound from reaction. Governor Sisolak was on with Anderson Cooper later that day, yesterday. And this was in response to that interview that Carolyn Goodman did. Have a listen to this. I have talked to people who have lost a loved one who came to COVID-19, to people that weren't able to visit a dying parent in a nursing home because they have restrictions on a nursing home. I talked to, I spent a half hour with our first uh, ground zero patient that we had a veteran at our veterans home. They came out of a coma that he was in for 30 days and he thanked me. He said, Governor, at least I'm to be able to see my grandchildren someday. Had you not done this, it wouldn't have been possible. It's important that we protect the health and the future and the well-being of our citizens. We can rebuild our economy. We will rebuild our economy. Las Vegas will continue to thrive, but I can't do that if I lose more people. Check out this headline. COVID-19 in Arizona. 13 residents dead, 28 infected at assisted living facility in Chandler. What? Yeah. The 13 deaths account for 13% of all COVID-19 related deaths in Maricopa County and 6% of Arizona's total as of Tuesday. I didn't hear the governor talk about this. Did you? What are we doing housing these people in these facilities if that's where the coronavirus is, is finding them and killing them? 
This is your Grand Canyon Information Radio Station, broadcasting on 1610 AM under National Park Service call sign KOP 716. Due to the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, all of Grand Canyon National Park is closed until further notice. This closure includes Arizona State Highway 64, which is closed to all visitor access from the south entrance station to the east entrance station. The health and safety of park visitors, employees, residents, volunteers, and partners at Grand Canyon National Park is the service's number one priority. The National Park Service has consistently assessed its park units and made modifications to its operations in accordance with CDC, state, and local public health guidance, and we will continue to follow the guidance of public health officials in making determinations about our operations to address this pandemic. is an important advisory regarding Arches and Canyonlands National Park. In response to guidance from local health authorities, Arches and Canyonlands National Parks are closed until further notice. All vehicles, bikes, and pedestrians are prohibited from entering any park areas, including visitor centers, campgrounds, trails, backcountry areas, and roads. Any recreational use of the park is in violation of this closure. We regret any inconvenience this may cause. We are working closely with federal, state, and local authorities and will keep you updated of further changes through social media and the park's website. Please help preserve and protect your national park by respecting these closures. I was taking 12, 15 trips down there a year. Very soon you think that, that belongs to you. This land is your land, this land is my land, you know, that type of thing. Above the dam, the Colorado River was turned back. The brown sediment that clogged the river water was gone, leaving a sapphire lake of matchless beauty. I hate to even mention the word Lake Powell. We call it Lake Fowl now. It's just a reservoir, big deep reservoir. The water is blue, there's no doubt about that, against that red rock. But my problem is I know what's underneath. You are listening to the Wyoming Department of Transportation Highway Advisory Radio, WPJZ 253, broadcasting on 1610 AM, located in Laramie, Wyoming. Hey, I've, I've said this forever. I, I, I've never known this feeling, but i got to believe if you can't lose your job, you look at every aspect of the day differently from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed. Everything is different in your life if you can't lose your job, including if you have a generous and rock-solid pension. I have friends, thoroughly good people, who are in that situation. But you do have a very different perspective on weighing risk. Oh, heck yeah! If you lose your job and, and, you're, and you're feeling, which is most of us, everything I've accumulated, whatever it is, this is what I've got to live on for the rest of my life, and, unless I can dig up a way to get some more. Right, it's, it's a whole different situation. By the way, uh, next hour, my guest, Governor of South Dakota, Governor Christy Noem just stoked about that she pushed back on this shutdown and she worked to protect her the working people and the families of south dakota great role model great role model men and women alike 800-282-2882 is the number New Mexico Department of Health says there have been 101 additional positive tests for coronavirus in New Mexico. 58 of the new cases, more than half, are from McKinley County, which recently surpassed Bernalillo County in the number of cases, even though it only has about one-tenth of population. There have also been five additional deaths, bringing the state's total to 104. What about you guys? What about us here in Albuquerque? Uh, I, I would imagine you guys are going to have to take a long, hard look at uh, where the money's going to be coming from for the rest of the year. 
Absolutely. And so for us, you know, city revenues are heavily based on GRT. So buying and selling of goods and services. And obviously those are way down. So uh, we're hurting as well. We're down $20 million this fiscal year. We're looking at a $50 million deficit for next year, uh, at least. I mean, that's assuming that we start reopening and so forth. So we're in pretty uh, a really tough position. Just one last time. Let's get cut one again before we go to break. Just to replay this judge, Eric Moyer, telling the salon owner if she admits that she was wrong, she doesn't have to go to jail. Cut one, go ahead. That you now see the error of your ways and understand that the society cannot punch where one's own belief in a concept of liberty permits you to flaunt your disdain for the rulings of duly elected officials that you owe an apology to the elected officials whom you disrespected. Judge, I would like to say that I have much respect for court and laws, and that I've never been in this position before, and it's not some place that I want to be, but I have to disagree with you, sir, when, I, when you say that I'm selfish, because feeding my kids is not selfish. And please go ahead with your decision, but I am not going to shut the salon. There is nothing in the United States Constitution that allows for an unelected, unaccountable bureaucrat to create law and then create penalties for violating that law. Starting tomorrow, most residents in the Houston area will be required to wear a mask when out in public. If they don't, they could be fined a thousand dollars, according to an order issued by a Harris County judge. So here we have someone who might have their businesses just being closed. They can't make their rent. They can't make their mortgage. And we're going to kick the community while they're down and give them a thousand dollar fine because they're not wearing a mask. Police in Lincoln Park, New Jersey, see a driver passed out from lack of oxygen before hitting a utility pole. In a Facebook post, they said they believed that excessive use of an N95 mask was a contributing factor because there was no evidence of drug or alcohol use, though they did say they couldn't be sure it was the mask. The Lincoln Park Police now say, quote, we're not trying to cause public alarm or suggest wearing an N95 mask is unsafe. The original point of the post was to state that in most cases, the wearing of this type of mask while operating a vehicle with no other occupants is unnecessary. Governor Parson says the state reached its peak on April 7th in the number of coronavirus patients in the hospital. Parson says 1,242 people were being treated in a hospital that day. Since then, the numbers have fallen. The total number of hospitalization has significantly reduced in every region of the state, with the exception of the St. Louis region. And the main word that we want to get out to St. Louis is that Jesus is Lord. That's right. Not uh, the crime that's on the street. We heard about all the shootings that they killed. Well, I want to play for you something that happened in Illinois, but it could be anywhere. And this is a governor, you know, that has Chicago, which is the epicenter of coronavirus in the state of Illinois. I mean, it's not even close when you're looking at the numbers. And so a reporter from downstate Illinois asked the governor, Pritzker, a question about the other towns within the state. Many people in rural parts of the state want to quarantine Chicago and the suburbs and reopen parts of downstate Illinois that aren't seeing infection rates like the urban areas. Why has the state not done that? <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm not sure how to answer that, except that this virus knows no boundaries, folks. <laughs> um, no one is immune from this virus, no matter where you live. Nobody said that. David gets very angry hearing that clip. I think we all do. Yeah, well, it's the smug laughter. It's like, no, these are real concerns, that, and it's not just Illinois. It's all over the place. The number of unemployed Ohioans has now topped 1 million. The latest at 2 o'clock on News Radio 610 WCBN. Uh, Dr. Katz, uh, later on in the great state of Michigan uh, this afternoon at our capital, uh, there's going to be protests. There's going to be a uh, few different organizations voicing their displeasure with this, that, and the other thing. My problem with some of the protesters is this. They're going in, sir, with a mentality of, if I get sick, I get sick. But it 
is far more important than that, isn't it, sir? Because if you get sick, now you're going to risk 40 others, and then you do the math from there. Uh, you know, listen, I fully support people exercising their rights. I get it. People are scared. People are concerned. They want everything back to normal. However, are we getting to a point, perhaps, doctor, as a nation, where the measures begin to be counterproductive? I'd like to give you a quote by Henry David Thoreau in his great essay, Simple Disobedience. He said, in a society with unjust laws, the only place for a just man is in that society's prisons. If you want to lock me up for practicing my First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, or Fourteenth Amendment rights, please look right here, put the cuffs on, and I'll see you in court. I keep, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of a quote by Jerry Garcia. He said, someone has to do something. It's incredibly pathetic that it has to be us. My friend and I made 50 signs. We should have made 200. We're not affiliated with any group. We are two American fathers out here to fight for our children's freedoms. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Don't let them silence us. Thank you. Now, the state, the governor, if the governor wants some kind of power, if the governor can make the case to the elected representatives of the people, and the elected representatives of the people could then pass a law, pass a bill that the governor could sign into law, granting the governor that power. But as we see across the country, governors are just claiming this power. And when there's not justice in a nation, you see, God has turned over to human government today to run this earth. But he holds them accountable. And when they fail, he removes them. Rome was removed from the scene. And we're going to talk about that later. You're listening to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation Highway Advisory Radio System. This station is updated to keep you informed of the latest travel conditions and highway information. Tune to this station when instructed to do so, and please drive safely. A minority of states remain under stay-at-home measures. New Jersey is one of them. Deaths are on the decline, but Governor Phil Murphy says not enough to open re -safe, uh, reopen safely. We cannot lull ourselves into thinking that all is well. We are still in the midst of a public health emergency. <laughs> Cuomo said the number of people who die each day there, still more than 300, is too high, but is showing a downward trend. Cuomo blasted those who he accused of playing politics during the crisis. Even in this moment when people are dying all across the country, you still want to play your politics? That's what this is about. And that's why it is so disturbing on a fundamental level. Politics. I'm getting up and I'm reading that death toll number. By the way, did you see the what people are doing in New York with his rat on rat on each other hotline? Oh no. yeah, <laughs> where they were texting. Uh, there's a text number you can send uh, text messages to report people in case they happen to be having a party or a gathering or be within a hundred yards of each other. Whatever whatever your line is, you can text them and let them know. Uh, what is going on in your neighborhood? It, it's a, a question of reporting your neighbors to the uh, the authorities because they're not cooperating with the plan. I mean, uh, listen, I realize there may be a little overlap if you believe the uh, Chinese bat flu is, is here to kill us all. Um, but still, you no, know, we don't want to get that culture started where, because the flip side of that is you must beg the government for your survival. And for your, uh, you know, your, your thriving. Oh, and it leads to corruption in all kinds of different ways also. Oh, yeah, of course. When, when your only avenue for good or to avoid evil is to beg the government, yes, welcome to the Soviet Union.
The House tonight advancing a nearly $500 billion coronavirus aid package. It includes more money to help small companies keep their employees on the payroll, along with funds for hospitals and COVID-19 testing. At a time when many Americans are enduring significant economic challenges, this bill will help small businesses to keep millions of workers on the payroll. You see states are starting to open up now, and it's very exciting to see. I think it's very awe-inspiring. While speaking with reporters from the White House Rose Garden about the coronavirus, President Trump was asked if a president who loses more Americans in six weeks than died in the entirety of the Vietnam War deserves to be reelected. No government employee will miss a paycheck. Those people lecturing the rest of us on out, you need to have patience. We restart the economy when it's safe. Oh man, I don't want to hear another word from those people. You know, poverty is a nasty thing. And the one thing about America is you can work yourself out of poverty. It used to be that individuals sacrificed themselves for institutions. Today, institutions are sacrificed for the whims of individuals. If our ancestors didn't feel fear, they would have stood and watched as predators approached them rather than protecting themselves. So by saying somehow fear is taboo, it, it's seriously a shocking strategic error. And then there was another great institution, namely the family. And when there were trials, and when there were crosses, and when there were, were misunderstandings, man and woman realized that they were two in one flesh. So they would put up with these crosses and trials simply because they bore loyalty to the institution of the family. What do you do if you decide that you can't scare people, but the truth is inherently terrifying? You don't tell the whole truth. We had old-fashioned tests that didn't work. They were really obsolete. They didn't work. They were broken. And we end up, uh, the testing has been incredible now. And uh, to a level that uh, nobody's seen. I got a call from President Moon of South Korea. He said, uh, congratulations, your testing was just, nobody's ever seen anything like we're doing. And so science matters. And all Dale's been saying to Governor Wolf is listen to the scientists, supply of those N96 masks. What's happened is we have all this vulnerability. It's like an iceberg underneath that's now you know being exposed. I think the initial response to 9-11 was national unity. But I think the Iraq war and the financial crisis so jaded Americans about their government. This program, the PPP, as, as you mentioned, it was advertised as it was, it's supposed to help smaller mom and pop businesses. Uh, and yet we saw giant chains right. all getting in on the action. At some point, gang, we have to go back to work. In 2008, you could make the argument it was a financial catastrophe, but here now we, we don't have a financial crisis, but it seems like we are still wanting to use the same set of solutions. I think we should have expected this. Mrs. Pelosi has always enjoyed holding power. All power within herself to make herself effectively the House of Representatives, ironically enough. Hate the evil. Hate the evil, love the good, and establish justice in the court. From the day I got elected, but you know it wasn't the day, it was many months before I got elected, this has been a witch hunt that was illegal. Uh, no. Where are the souls that will sacrifice the great institutions of the universe, the institutions that hold us together, just for the sake of satisfying an individual fancy? Closing credit song with Mike Collins.
That's my closing credits right there.